If you're going to be on YouTube and you're part of the LGBTQ community, you have to know who Jade Fox is. There's a lot of OG YouTubers out here that are still filming, and that's including Jade Fox. She came out with a video titled, Everything I Got Wrong About Relationships as an Avoidant. Okay, that caught my eye, avoidant, because I learned not too long ago that I am also an avoidant. Okay, well, that is an issue that I do carry with me in relationships that I will try to work on when I do get into one. Let's go ahead and hear um, what Jade Fox has to say about it. Y'all ready to react? Because I am. Let's get it. I don't know if anyone's going to take me seriously with this Monopoly piece on top of my f***ing head, but... Ain't nothing wrong with it. Let's go for it. You good. I am going through a bit of a transition. We already know this. Baby, I have sp been spilling my guts on this platform for the past few months now. Um, also, I had to delete Twitter because as a Leo, I tend to use my social media as my personal diary. <laughs> it be Can't do that times. anymore. So I've been having more time to just sit with my feelings, sit with the the epiphanies that I have been having. Getting to know yourself a little bit more, right? Put something on that baby's head. Also on this healing journey of mine, I've also realized nothing really matters. <laughs> like nothing matters except the things that you make matter. Uh, and the fact that I was so bold to be so secure in my insecurities. Mm. It's weird behavior. Mm. So let's get into it. This is everything that I got wrong about Good way to put it. As an avoiding. Stay back. <laughs> <laughs> Stay back. Don't get close. Drinking rosé at 10.53 a.m. on a Sunday is wild to me. I don't know. That's just insane. But if Girl, I have not drank a sip of alcohol for two months. Just recently, when I was drinking, I just was getting dizzy. I don't know if it has to do with my vertigo or something, or the fact that I'm getting older, or my tolerance isn't as great as it used to be, but it don't hit like it used to. So I'm drinking coffee, but you go ahead and enjoy that wine. It brunch, it will be sisterhood, right? Okay, you see how we need to rewrite the narrative sometimes? When you're avoidant, I think that you tend to conflate honesty with transparency. Meaning, okay, what does that mean? if I tell you my honest opinion about everything, if I... By the way, Jade, because she is not a psychologist or a therapist, I am not either. She's just giving her opinions based on maybe facts that she's read upon. That's what I'm thinking is happening here. So you guys don't go by everything that she says. Just do your research behind closed doors and see if you can relate. In the meantime, we're going to enjoy this. I'm up front with you about my unpleasant feelings. If I am honest with you and I tell you the truth through and through, then you cannot come for me and tell me that I'm not honest with you or mm. that we don't have an honest relationship. Mm. And this is how I think avoidant folks tend to get the rep of being insensitive because there's no motivation to be honest when it matters there's honesty when it's not necessary if you've ever been in one of those like icky situations where you want to break up with somebody over something that's not that deep which is okay by the way you can break up with somebody the moment you don't want to be with somebody you should break up with them 100 percent. i don't care what the reason is the exactly. moment you don't want to be with somebody no more you should break up with them and stop wasting that person's time okay but um it's kind of like if you are breaking up with somebody because you're no longer attracted to them you don't have to tell them, hey, girl, it's giving butt in the face. So I got to go. Like, you don't <laughs> have to. Transparency, I think, is more about sharing when you're having doubts, um, complicated feelings that can impact another person. It's less about what you're honest about and more about when you decide to be honest. I think that honesty c can come from an ego space, whereas transparency does not. Mm. honesty will look like why were you talking so, to that girl over there what the fuck the, the reason why i'm not speaking so much is because this girl is very smart okay jade fox had a bit of some knowledge and i don't know how old she is she might be around my age maybe mid to early 30s maybe early 30s so she's got some experience so 
I'm learning myself what she's saying about transparency and honesty. Okay. Talking about. I think it's disrespectful that you talk to her. If y'all haven't noticed, this video here is for the grown folks. If y'all really want to be all up in this conversation and gain some knowledge, this is for us. I don't like that you did that in public. I don't like how that makes me look. Like, it makes me look dumb. It makes me look like we're not secure. Like, what? what what's that? I think the transparency version could be, I had an uneasy feeling as you were talking to that girl over there. And maybe it's because... I think that she's attractive and I'm feeling mm, a bit insecure I see. right now. But okay. Like, I see what you're saying. That a feeling in me right now. And I think that what transparency... So that to me is more so about communication and how you deliver your message. You can choose to be blunt and just scratch the surface of what is bothering you. Whereas if you choose to communicate effectively to help the other person better understand what you're feeling instead of what you're thinking, there would be a better results and a better solution to it so that it doesn't happen again so if you were to tell them how you feel and not necessarily about what they're doing wrong you'll have a better outcome i think that's where she's getting to and she's she's calling it honesty and transparency i'm just ca i'm calling it communication the offers is a conversation because you can be honest without necessarily revealing your true feelings whereas right. you can't be transparent and not reveal your true feelings. I agree. Like you can describe in detail what's happening in front of you, but what's happening inside of you. Ooh. That's the tough part. <laughs> that is tough. And this is why I think of when people can just be fucking jerks. 100%. Like be jerks That's, because that is a problem that I do have. Um, being an avoidant. She calls it ego. For me, it's pride. But I guess they're pretty much the same if you look at it that way. I just feel like you know what you did or what you said would be disrespectful or offensive to me or hurt me in some way because if the roles were switched and you were in my shoes and and i did exactly what you did or said you would feel the same way i am feeling so my pride kicks in and, and is thinking you know why i'm feeling what i'm feeling why do i have to explain it to you so my message always comes off a little bit aggressive and too direct sometimes I do need to work on that. I need to be a little bit more vulnerable with my feelings and express it as soft as it may sound. <laughs> I hate sounding soft. I grew up in a household where my mom was tough. So there's five of us girls, one boy, he's the youngest. So our parents raised us to be strong women and what they consider to be strong. That talking about feelings thing, that's some weak shit. Mental health, don't exist. Communication, I barely had it growing up. So this is something that I have to learn on my own and to be comfortable enough to trust this person to share my feelings with. That's tough. I rather avoid the situation Sensitive. to the point to where they where I have been told that I am passive aggressive. I know when I do speak, it, it comes off a little bit too harsh and I end up hurting their feelings. And that sucks, you know what I'm saying? I don't wanna do that. So that's why I do things kind of like indirectly and passively. I'm bringing it up, but going around it in a way where it, I'm thinking it won't hurt your feelings, but low key it still is. <laughs> it's probably worse because I'm not being direct with my feelings. <clears throat> yes, I am direct when I'm finally fed up, but I can also be passive when I don't wanna fight. So, or argue defense of our truths number two being in a relationship does not mean that you have lost your independence now if you're with a narcissist or someone who's like deeply troubled or damaged then probably you need to leave that bitch <laughs> in the lost and found leave them in the lost and found um because girl what what why why none of us asked to be here yet we're here and so why are we signing up for things that we don't want there is oh, this fake I was sense answer. of like losing your sense of self or losing like my individuality. I can't be my own person or like I can't have my own flow. I have to abandon my own desires. I can't like move throughout the world that I want in the way that I want to because I'm in a relationship now and it's that clank clank that's holding me back. And there's a few things that I want to say. 
because I also used to feel this way. Um, there is a way to be independent and in a relationship at the same time. And it requires p- boundaries for mm. one. Um, That's right. And an understanding of boundaries. Cause I think that one thing, ha- I think that having boundaries is one thing. I think understanding the purpose of them is something else because you can tell people all day, like, I don't like this. I don't like this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But the point of a boundary is to still let people in it's still letting someone right. in on what it means to understand you what explaining it, means to it. Love you, what it means to support you you have to explain it like there was a boundary that you have created because of something that has happened in the past that made you uncomfortable or made you feel a negative type of emotion that you no longer want in your life from here moving forward so these these new people coming in, they weren't there in your past life. They don't know about those experiences. So explain to them why you have these boundaries so they have a better understanding of who you are and how to love you. But they're not they're not psychics, you know. They can't assume shit. You have to explain. It's not you gotta let them you're in. not just putting up a bunch of walls around you so that no one can touch you. I mean Listen, I'm enjoying want- this conversation. I know I'm already putting a lot of my input, but uh, she's she's hitting those topics she's hitting it and i can relate to do that i don't think that's what a boundary is but i don't think that that is the purpose of a boundary i used to make sure that i always had an out whether that mean i was always like financially a bit more stable than my partner or i was always like yep um i kept a certain amount of distance between me and my partner This also goes for friendships, by the way. Mm. Um, Or just like there was always something. There was always a space between me and my partner that I filled with something that allowed me to feel like I could go at any time. When me and Jaden first started dating, this is a horrible. I understand my intentions. And so I have compassion for myself there. But at the same time, like words mean things and words can hurt people. So I used to say that I don't need you. Mm, I don't need you. Don't say that. I want you to know that I don't need you. Oh. And I think in my brain that meant like. I, I wouldn't say that. As long as everyone knows that I'm making a choice to be here, then that means that when slash if I make the choice to not be here, I told them. I let them know ahead of time. <laughs> Give them a warning. This independence that I'm fighting <laughs> I don't do warnings. so hard to have. I don't do warnings and I don't do threats. And when I'm with you, I'm with you until you decide to fuck up in some way or in many ways until I'm finally fed up and leave. But when it comes to independence, I am with her on that. I've always been on top of my shit. Even when I was broke, I still was in control of my situation. And I understand some people like to be housewives and house husbands and what have you but in my opinion and this is just my opinion but every relationship well however they work they work but this is just an opinion of mine i feel like if you're both young and if you're both healthy motherfuckers work get a job get a career because by you being a housewife or a house husband you are solely depending on your partner financially you ain't got nothing under your name you have no bank account other than the joint account that your partner is making for you (laughs) and who's to say if you're even on that nothing is promised because we don't know what the future holds none of us know as much as we would love to be with someone for a lifetime We don't know what's gonna happen, but you wanna be prepared for it. You don't wanna be left in the dust. You help support your partner emotionally. You took care of home while they progressed in their career. And when things don't work out, either they cheated or you cheated or something else happened, or you no longer don't wanna be together, you are now 50 years old with absolutely nothing because you built nothing for yourself. But that partner that you supported that whole time, they're thriving and you're starting from scratch you're starting from a t- from a 20 year old's perspective it's important to to know that you can do things on your own doesn't even support me like it doesn't even help me i would actually benefit from having someone to rely on i would actually benefit by sharing this load of life with another person 
this is me this is just me okay by the way this is not advice if baby this is not advice <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say okay you're just speaking upon um, your personal experience like actually I, get I would benefit from from having a true partnership actually i think i would like being able to not be independent for a day or two mm. and be fully dependent on someone else and let someone else make the decisions let just someone- this, i've thought about that many times because in every relationship that i've been in i've been the one who's got my shit together i helped them build and it was just so much on my back it's stressful. As much as I wanted to do these things, it just would have been nice if I can have someone else do something for me. Because a bitch gets tired. You know what I'm saying? But now at the age of 39, by the way, my birthday was March 11th. Happy birthday to me, Miss Pisces. <laughs> at the age of 39, I'm looking for something different nowadays. You got to get your shit together. You got to have a career. You got to have a home, whatever that is. You cannot be too much in debt. Your credit score has got to be at least good. And, and the reason why all this is important at my age is because I didn't meet you when we were younger. If I did, we would have built this together. But I didn't. We are now at the age of where we should have shit together. I'm no longer settling. We can be powerful together. I'm not going to be carrying you anymore. All that weight? I'm tiny. My legs are shaking. My knees ain't good no more. Okay? Okay. Let's walk this path together. Hold my hand right beside me. You feel me? But let's get back to this. Oh my God, this video, you know what? It is what it is. Her video is 30 minutes long. Mine might be an hour. I'm not going to lie. And I probably won't edit that much to it. I think I'm going to let it post. This is a good conversation. Else take care of me. Let someone else think about if I've eaten that day. Wouldn't that be great, Jade? Instead of just like trying to... to keep this sacred independence that's really a survival um instincts yeah but like yep, yep. keep this sacred independence and suck the, the the teat of of hyper independence like what are we actually fighting for like what is the actual like where's the when does the good part start in my fight for independence and honesty and you know freedom like what am i act like where is the good part like what like what is the fruitful successful easy feeling that comes as a result mm. of fighting for these things mm. and the reality is is that it doesn't exist <laughs> at least it didn't exist for me like the independence that i feel is because i, I don't trust people and i feel that if i don't trust people and i rely fully on myself then i can actually have something to depend on and the something is me Mm. um if i'm always able to tell the truth then i don't ever have to feel like i'm holding back feelings i don't ever have to feel like i'm in a situation that i don't want to be in or that i've been cornered or something like that because i let people know that it was always my intention to to be one foot out the door so that people will never actually rely on me people will never actually put anything real into the relationship that I have with them. Mm. Therefore, I don't have to feel bad about it when I leave. Um, Or like none of this, like the end of the road doesn't come to anything positive. It only perpetuates these feelings of like neglect. Right. And loneliness neglect. loneliness and if you really like i to- can be in a relationship where i love someone they love me but i still feel alone and that some some of that is to my own doings it's because i'm too fucking independent there's been times where i where people have offered to help but i refuse to take it i'm like no i got it because then i feel like i owe you something and i don't want your sympathy i'll figure it out but that comes to the point where then you feel like alone e- that fucking independent see the thing that i would have loved in my relationships was the emotional support because i have such rooted issues with my emotions and my vulnerability my communication skills is not that great so i wish i had a partner that had that because that's something that they could have provided for me it doesn't have to be financially that for me would have helped me be vulnerable and helped me feel safe to express myself I can help you financially, but can you help me emotionally? Because that's where I'm lacking. You need your freedom 
I'm sorry. I don't mean to have this attitude, but like I'm thinking of somebody in my head as I'm saying. (laughs) But like if you need to have this freedom, if you need to have this attitude or this way of life where you're not tethered to anyone, you're not tethered to anything, you're a free bird, you know, uh, whatever. You get what you need out of people and then you move on to the next person, next miss one, next 15, one coming type vibes. Why are you in a relationship? Uh. (laughs) What are you doing? Uh, that's like going to Red Lobster and ordering a cheeseburger for what why are you signing up for this why are you wasting people's time the thing about us avoidance is that as much as we love to preach like individuality uniqueness freedom <laughs> like um, independence like all of these things we be love bombing the shit out of people oh yes we will make you yes. feel like you are Yes, baby, that you are the next best thing to an angel. We will clear mm-hmm. the fucking weekend to just hang out with you. Yeah. We will c- uh, create these like romantic, especially since my love language is quality time and f- physical touch. So I will definitely love bomb you. My love language in the way that I give is also words of affirmation. So you'll hear me compliment you all the motherfucking time because when I see you, I think you're gorgeous. I think that you're the most beautiful person. I'm talking, when I say beautiful, I'm talking about inside. You're such a great person. And I'm always speak on it. So yeah, I'm with you. I do, lo- I do love bomb. Events and spaces for us to like do that type of thing together. Because the thing is, is that we still need those things. We just don't want to commit to those things. We still need the feelings of safety and security and love and affection and sensuality and like all of these things. We just don't want the the responsibility that comes with maintaining a relationship that is attached to it. And so the thing about a relationship is that even the word itself, it is your life in relation to another person. Mm. It is your feelings in relation to another's and vice versa like a relationship is a series of cause and effect it's just a cycle of cause and fucking effect girl and so to think that you're gonna live this like isolated independent life fully outside of this relationship that you chose to be in how do you think that this works so i think that people I, yes, I am an avoidant, but when it comes to relationships, I think I do a great job when it comes to partnership because I don't have anyone close to me. I, I truly don't. I think humans suck. I've seen too many people hurt other people just from an observer. I think humans are very ugly, very selfish. But when I do get into a relationship, I do trust you. I chose to be with you. You are my best friend. I'm not an avoidant when it comes to that necessarily. I think it, more specifically avoidance and just whatever. If, if, if you don't consider yourself avoidant, but you found your, but you find that like, oh, Jay, Loki dragging me a little bit. Um, I'm not saying <laughs> that this is what you are. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a therapist. I just spend a lot of time by myself and I read a lot and I'm committed to my own joy i'm committed to understanding myself because i refuse to for sure be wreck it ralph in another bitch's life like no for sure and so because i've always wondered why i know so much and this is not me tooting my own horn okay i've realized that i am pretty knowledgeable when it comes to human behavior and i don't know how that came about because i don't read books i don't really do too much research necessarily Unless I'm, I'm curious about something, then I'll just Google something. But I think realizing, looking back at things, I think I learned so much from my own experiences and observing. I am a loner. I am alone a lot of the time. So I do a lot of uh, thinking, if that makes any sense. And I look back at situations and and think about perspectives and when I am around people, body language is everything to me. Tone of voice is everything to me. Facial expressions. It intrigues me. So I pay, I pay close attention to stuff like that. And I love to hear people's stories and their lives and how their upbringing was and how they become the, 
and how they became the person they are today. Just my curiosity alone and actually and actually asking different types of people deep questions is how I learned so much. So that's how I gain my knowledge. Or my own shit. I think people think that you show up and you do all of these things. Like when I say the responsibility of a relationship, like you show up and you do all of these things. I, I show up for your stuff. I support you. I help you pay the bills. I make sure that you have food. Like I think people look at all of these things that happen or that you may do for your person in a relationship as the means to the reward of love. It's like, I'm going to do all of these things and then in return, I'm gonna have a loving relationship. When I think that it's actually, or at least I, me and Jaden, it's the opposite. We're like, because of the love and the partnership that we have, it is my responsibility to uphold that love, joy, that that strong sense of partnership, commitment, um, by showing up in these ways. Like, mm -hmm. it's not something, it's not tit for tat, it's not, I think like a very rudimentary understanding of relationships is that it's very like tit for tat. It's very mm. like, I do this, you do that. You do that. I do this. When I found even in my friendships too, like the most free flowing, like where there's flow and there's a genuine energy to show up it doesn't feel concerted it doesn't feel like it's this like Ugh, thing is when you the motivation is the joy and the love that you feel in your relationship it's like i'm gonna show and up for you not because i'm supposed to and that's my obligation as your friend or that's my obligation as your partner i'm gonna show up for you because i want you to feel supported i'm gonna show up for you because i know that when i show up for you in a certain way that that it strengthens our connection in some type of way right like it makes exactly you feel seen she said, and it makes me exactly. feel good to know that i can fulfill this for you um and i building together that now that I it's it's building together not just building them up just because you feel like it's your role to do so I have this understanding whenever I am meeting folks especially now and when I say especially now I mean with this awareness when I meet folks there's so much flow because I don't even entertain people who don't have this about them like I'm not going to entertain people who don't have who have not cultivated a culture on their own around conflict resolution around self-reflection mm. if you have not created a routine or a culture around accountability or identifying what your real truth is identifying what it is how like I, identifying your role and your happiness and your misery like it's hard for me to connect with you because right i've already done that i'm doing that's her thing but for me it's i try to stay away from people who are very ignorant everyone is ignorant and in, in, in some way including myself but if you're choosing to stay ignorant and refusing to learn you don't have to we don't have to agree on certain things but at least take the time to learn about it to see if you still to see if you still stand by your opinions what bothers me a lot are are people who are choosing to be homophobic choosing to be racist choosing to stereotype choosing to be sexist when i hear them talk they're like children and i just refuse like i don't have the energy to teach them because they're choosing to be ignorant they want to stay that way. So I'm just gonna skedaddle and go in the other direction because I don't got time for that energy. Now, and people who are not there yet, y'all tend to make, oh my God. Y'all are a plague. <laughs> y'all mm. are so fucking annoying. I have yes. to say. I made a TikTok about this recently. I don't know. I just feel like some of y'all are terrible people and y'all lack conflict resolution and so no one actually gets to tell you that you're a terrible person because the moment try anyone tries to be honest with you and tell you that you're a terrible person y'all be thinking that like oh we're not compatible i'm not nominating myself to be the guinea pig on your journey of self-reflection that's your job 
in the mm-hmm. same way that your mental health is your job. If you have a child, that child is your job. Your joy is your job. Your misery is your job. All the things that happen in your life that make you feel good, bad, confused, satisfied, mm. otherwise, your job. Your it's choice, no your decisions. Yes. And I find that people who are not willing to do that work will make it your job. And baby, I don't need any more jobs. No, it's not I'm still working on mine, okay? Someone. It's just not. You're one person. You are a speck on this earth. You are just a ball. You are just a nucleus of <laughs> nerve go. endings. Okay, and scientist. She's all about and it. You are as big as my pinky nail in relation <laughs> to how the scale of the earth. She got deep in the science. So to think that you can do everything and you can do anything without any support from anyone else that just sounds like a really hard job that sounds like a her saying that i i do realize that myself because i do isolate myself a lot and that's something that i do need to work on because i gotta let someone in okay it's just that like it's just hard to find people who are genuine and who actually do care the last person that ca- that truly cared my was my best friend of 19 years passed away at the age of 32. It's it's a journey that I am conflicted with. I just haven't com- come across someone who really truly wants to put in the work with me. You get what I'm saying? And I'm talking about friendship wise, not relationships. Really big mountain. And if you want to choose to do that on your own, you have baby you you can. You got it. But it's also not bad to need somebody. Not having access to your emotions or being someone who's not an emotional person is not a superpower. It's not cunt. It's not cute. You're not smarter than anyone. You're not better than anyone. And in fact, you're not even informed on yourself. You're not even informed on yourself. And you've been yourself your whole life. So how is that sickening? That's like being in the third grade and getting held back until you're 20. What? What we get into it now? I'm she be loose. talking her shit, yo. She she be dissing us, yo. I need to chill before I start naming names. And oh I hate shit! When an emotionless. So emotions, let's talk about it. I'm a Pisces, okay. I am an emotional person, but because I grew up in a household where we don't talk about our emotions, I can feel hurt. I can feel sad. My first reaction will be anger that's also due to pride i'm not soft i'm not weak so i thought that's what it is but it's not tries to give us advice on how to be emotionless as if it's even benefiting them like baby you don't even like yourself you don't even like yourself i I I, i've always considered a person to be strong when they can express their feelings because that means they're not choosing their pride or their ego and i don't have to guess or assume anything because you are expressing yourself freely You are not locked up in your body, feeling like you're unable to express. I think those are the people that are the strongest. From you, why would I take advice from somebody who doesn't even know what they mean? You don't even know how to talk to yourself, let alone someone else. What advice do you need to give to yourself? Maybe you should figure that out first before you try to like do something over here. Worry about that. Baby steps, babe. Baby steps. And then maybe you can sit at the adults table. Okay? Because we (laughs) over here. This girl. That wine got her talking her shit. Over here, we (laughs) cry. Over here, Uh, we get a little rage filled sometimes. Right? I only cry alone. I think my, in my marriage, I think they've, they've only seen my eyes get watery once or twice. Other than that, I cry alone. I know. What does that mean? I know. You know what I mean? Everyone has emotions. Everyone has a wide range of emotions. There are just some people who have language for it and some people who don't. Some people who are more informed on those and then some who are not. But like, what does it mean when you say you're an emotional person that you are not afraid of showcasing your emotions in front of people? 
Okay. I'll I guess tell so. you. I'll tell you why I call myself emotional. It's because I feel every emotion intensely and passionately. But the only emotion that I choose to express is anger. But deep down inside, girl, I feel all of them feelings. All of them feelings. And people confuse it as sensitivity. And for some people, it, it can be. You could be sensitive to a lot of things that gets you to, to spark those emotions. But for me, it's, it's not necessarily that. It's just, I just feel emotions strongly um but in my, but but to me because everyone has the capacity for very intense deep emotions you well i guess not everyone does have the capacity for that but most people can experience emotion and because of that you have tools to understand mm -hmm. them and the thing about people and who if are you don't that's what therapy is for or who say that they're void of emotion. Y'all are like the car on fire that's on the <laughs> side of the street that everyone is slowing down on the highway to watch. Uh. Y'all, but but to but to y'all, the car on fire, it's like, oh my God, what's everyone looking at? <laughs> what's everyone looking at? Oh, oh, stop. That is so funny. Stop. <laughs> that is literally y'all. It's like everyone can see uh. the damage. Right. Damage is everyone can see the the that's funny the ruin in you but you and it's such a disservice to go on about about but the sad thing about that is that those people who can see it they can choose to talk to you about it i never had those people people are afraid because my first emotion is defensive and anger I think that's why they're afraid to speak to me about those things. But my whole entire life, nobody would stop and tell me, hey, bitch, you are on fire. You, you're going to need some water to put that out. I'm just letting you know. And if you don't want to, it's that fire is going to get bigger and bigger and, and you're just going to cause more damage. Nobody in my whole entire life has ever held me accountable for the way I handle things. And it's because I get defensive and I understand that. What I need is a great communicator who can speak to me without judgment and with more understanding and compassion and speak to me in a way where it's more from a caring perspective and not from a bitch you got issues perspective. <laughs> if the message was delivered in that way, I think I would be able to sit and think of ways to put out my fire. But no one ever has, so it was more about being self-aware. And that process is a lot longer. It would have been a lot easier, and I think I would have saved half of my life if people just stopped me and talked to me. Because if you did talk to me and I was not ready to put out my fire, and I lashed out on you, I am sorry, but years later, I, look, I would look back and I'd be like, you know what, that one person really cared about me. And you're that one person that I want to keep in my life. And I would say thank you too. Never had that. So I do a lot of self-work on my own. It's taking a lot longer than, than I would have liked, but I'm still working on it. Prideful about not having access to your emotions. That is once again, your job. And this is something that you cannot teach people. Um, I've learned in the last few years of just like, I've learned that I'm not a people person like, I'm not a people person, but I'm a people person. Does that make sense? It does to like, me. I'm not, gonna, I'm not like I'm a people way. person that like, in that like, I'm going to invite a, like 50 bitches over my house and we're going to eat macaroons and like, you know, share napkins. I'm a people person in that if you're around me, I want to understand you. Right. If you're around me, I want to get it. If you're around me, what is your thing? A lot of people have considered me their friend because of that same reason. <laughs> I'm very relatable and I don't judge. Like people open up to me a lot and that's because I make them comfortable enough to do so. Just because I'm a loner and an introvert does not mean I'm antisocial. I'm not a people person either. You know, I don't like people, <laughs> but I still care about people. And that's where my activism comes to play. So it's a little, it's a little tricky. It's confusing, but it makes sense. What is, what is your joy? Like what is, who are you? Like I'm a people person in that way. And so, when it comes to people who are just, 
who try their absolute best to be as far from their emotions as possible, they're never going to win. Uh, yeah. And everyone loses. That's true. You have to leave them where they are. You end up going into this catch-22 cycle because on one hand, it's like they're showing the emotion. Whether you want to acknowledge the emotion or not, we see it. We can see that, like, you need support. We can see that, mm -mm. okay, maybe you don't have language for this or, like, you need some compassion right now or maybe some patience, some grace, whatever the case is. Like, we can understand it. But because of your inability to accept the fact that you are an emotional being, it anything that comes from this side is going to be rejected. And it makes people who are very emotionally driven or people who are a bit more tapped in emotionally, it makes us feel rejected. It makes us feel like we're small because my emotions and yours can't exist in the same room anymore. Because while, because yours are so big and we could have a conversation, we could, we could do something about it so that they feel less, um, explosive, destructive. Like we <laughs> yes. can have a conversation about For that. For sure. And even like people. That's why I need a good communicator to help me with that. Decide that I'm going to control my emotions. That's also not the goal. The goal of emotion. It's your emotions are like it's, plants. I might agree with her. Maybe she's got more to say about that. But it's healthy to control your emotions because if you don't, um, especially if you're an emotional person, it can come out explosive and it can hurt and damage other people, not just yourself. So you do want to control it in a way where you do express it and deliver it in a healthy way. But let's see what she's got to say. It's like the trees in the forest. It's going to do what it wants to do, regardless of what you're of what you want to do with them. Right. Like you're going to feel it and you can either use that time to understand it, to hone it, to understand how to do something productive with it or at least not destructive. OK, or so she is saying what I'm saying. The feelings are there. You feel them as, as much as you can. It's just the way you express it that needs the control try to suppress it because I feel like a lot of people who say like I I just know how to control my emotions or whatever like I feel like y'all just suppress your emotions I feel like it's a, it's a it's about deliverance there's a resistance to feeling or like there's a resistance to the exploration of what is actually happening inside of you because you're so stuck on wanting to control your emotions which really I think is controlling perception I think it's controlling perception of how, like you being mad, what that looks like, you being sad, what that looks like, rather than like coming to a place of acceptance and understanding. Because the longer you're like, cause the more you try to like, just control your emotions, like, it's kind of like cops <laughs> and very ACAB, very ACAB. If your only job is to control the emotion. You're not trying to understand the crime. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to understand the people behind the crime. You're not trying to understand if there even is a mm. crime. You're just, your whole job is to just control it and control it only. It's gonna be more aggressive or abrasive right. than it needs right. to be because you're not understanding the nature so of what you're feeling. I do hold a lot of that stuff in because I consider it weakness if you express a lot of those emotions emotions so what I do after an argument or after I'm hurt in a relationship I choose to be alone I will walk away I will go spend some alone time because I am angry <laughs> the first emotional reaction because so I need to calm the fuck down that's why I walk away that's why it's considered avoidant because I'm not there present time and it's okay to step away so that you don't say things that you might regret but my problem is I don't sit with myself and really understand why I'm feeling this way instead of being like, bitch, calm the fuck down. I'm just trying to calm down rather than try to understand it. That's why I'm an avoidant. Most of the time, what we're feeling makes a lot of fucking sense. Mm -hmm. Unless you have a literal chemical imbalance, you have a diagnosis that says that your brain and the way that your brain works is a little bit different. It's a little bit more unique unless that is what's happening. Right. Most of the time, 
what you're feeling makes sense for what you're dealing with. But because you're so stuck on trying to like control your emotions, you are assigning a more mm. abrasive or cold, hard. Right. I end up instead of trying to understand it and then coming back to the situation and expressing it, I keep it all in. I will keep it in for months. All these things are collecting inside me. All these things are collecting inside me. And during that time, I'm being passive aggressive, not making the situation any better. Until finally, I'm like, you know what? You want me to be honest with you? I'm gonna be direct because that's all I can do when I am honest. And it's only because I keep everything in. If I was honest from the beginning, instead of holding on to those feelings because I'm trying to prevent hurting them, I'm hurting myself until finally I blow the fuck up and I'm blunt and aggressively direct. Not only did I hurt them still, I hurt myself. The dumbest thing ever. <sighs> it's a hot mess, y'all. This is why I am not ready for a relationship, okay? I have a lot to work on. I am not perfect. Doesn't need that. It just doesn't need that. The lesson. <laughs> See, like here on YouTube, on my videos, you guys see how direct I am. Like, I'm honest with you guys. It's easy. I'm not close to any of you. I don't have an intimate relationship with any of you. I can be honest with people I meet from work, too. People that I avoid expressing myself to because I don't want to hurt them are the people that I actually care about, which is my partner. And even though my feelings are valid, I'm afraid that by expressing my feelings that it's going to somehow trigger their insecurities or cause more damage to them and that's something that i uh, avoid doing but you see the difference like yeah, yeah you guys don't get to see that part of me only my partners do uh but y'all will always see my honesty <laughs> okay just saying oh, i'm spitting right now well, the lesson is let it flow bitch <laughs> you are not a superpower and that is that's fine. funny and that is okay you do not have to be above anyone. You do not have to be bigger than anyone to live a good life. You can be right with us, with us all, and have <laughs> everything that you want. With my current relationship, I know now what it means to have independence. So coming from an avoidant perspective, as an avoidant person who's really, really working on it, and I'm really doing my best to do the work, I'm, I have now come to understand that I can have everything that I want and that I can have freedom and independence and, you know, things that feel like they're just for me in a relationship. I feel that there's a lot that I can, that I can have in a relationship. And mostly that comes with leaning in to the relationship. Avoidant people, we have a tendency to think that all of the gifts and success lie outside of people. They lie fully within ourselves. And while one side of the coin, I think that that's true. On the other side, there's a lot that we're getting from our, there can be a lot that we're getting from our communities, from our relationship that we are just not acknowledging that are also contributing to our success. They're also contributing to our well be our well being, but because it's outside of our value system where we only value our input, our work, our time, our energy. Like when you're avoidant, you're very self centered. So it's like it's hard for you to see the value in what you get from other people or from other environments, and mm. it's there, and it's always been there. And you can fight against the idea that it was there the whole time all you want or lean in <laughs> and understand that when you lean in, you let people understand you more, which means that the things that you want are not far fetched. They're not crazy. They're not. I mean, some shit that y'all want is crazy and y'all need to go see a therapist. Regardless, everyone needs to see a therapist. <laughs> everyone needs to see a therapist. For sure. Every like, single human. You can have a lot of what you want. It just takes working with another human being. Yes. But I and think that I am the looking working for that. With a human, another human being is where people stop. That's where the conversation stops. That's where the work mm, stops. Mm -hmm. mm. But you can get there. You just have to want to get there with someone. 
that's all. good job jay that's what's up great motherfucking video but tell me what y'all thought about this video i know this one is a long one but it is worth it comment below let me know if i should uh do more of these type of videos see y'all next one peace